Hello everyone, welcome to Adobe Life. My name is Julia Masalska and I'm your host. And I'm joined today by the wonderful Clady from Print My Soul. Clady, say hi, hi everyone. <laughs> hi everyone. Thank you so much for being here and joining us today. Yeah, thanks everyone for joining the chat. I see there are a lot of familiar faces. There's Cody, there's Joel, there's Steve, Simi, Ingrid, Noor, Luke. Wow, so many, so many cool people here. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, if you're joining from YouTube, make sure to go to behance.net slash live. This is where we are going to read the comments and answer your guys' questions because this is what we're here for. We're here to learn, you know, from each other. And um, so Clady and I, uh, we have been on Adobe Life yesterday as well. And Clady has been working on a really amazing composite in Photoshop. And then we even jumped into Illustrator. We also use Adobe Stock. And today Clady is going to do some really, really exciting stuff as well. She's going to talk about it in a little bit, but first, Let's talk about the daily creative challenges, guys. Let's jump onto my screen and take a look at the daily creative challenge page. It's on behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop. In 90 minutes, we are going to be reviewing your challenge submissions live. So if you want to be reviewed from uh, by Clady and by me, make sure to submit your challenges in the next 90 minutes or 85 minutes. Um, so today's challenge has to do with mock-up application. And um, as as um, Kathleen introduced the Daily Creative Challenge right before this, um, make sure to check that out and watch the video if you haven't yet. And make sure to submit your Daily Creative Challenge to our Discord channel, which you can find here if you click the community chat button. You can also find all the challenge information above the chat. There will be a little chap, uh, challenge button. And if you click that, you will get all the necessary information information. So we are going to be reviewing some of your guys' submissions from the Discord channel, which you can submit um, into our Photoshop and current challenge page, which is uh, where we are sharing our work and learning from each other. So we're giving each other feedback. There are also um, amazing mentors who give you feedback, including Clady. So this is super, super exciting for us. And I cannot wait to take a look at it in 90 minutes. All right. So um, if you want to follow Clady on Instagram, make sure to check out Print My Soul. It's her studio. And also you can follow her on I Am Clady. Let's take a look at that as well. I Am Clady, there we go. And Clady is sharing amazing knowledge, amazing tips and tricks. So make sure to check that out and follow her. Of course, feel free to follow me also on Instagram. It's Julia Masalska. And yeah, let's jump to Clady and let's take a look at what we are going to be working on today. I'm so, so excited. <laughs> Fantastic. Right. So Julie, thank you so much for all these uh, super useful information. I also look forward to see your daily creative challenge um, on Discord. It's very, very always in interesting to see what you guys have been up to. Uh, I can see everyone in the chat saying hello. I can see Hemi, Steve saying, Clady looks like super cool assassin. Julia, I told you I was the bad, I was the bad guy. Where are you? This side? No, this side. You look Here like an assassin and I look like a nerd. <laughs> I look like I just came back from school and with my big red backpack. <laughs> That's super fun. Well, fantastic. As you can see, I just want to make sure that I say hi to Jatirmia, Noor, and everyone that is here all the time with us. Cornell, Steve, and also Andrea Solder, Yuke, Monica, Amy, Viola was here uh, yesterday. Ferry, Angela. I'm going to keep looking in the chat. Julia is going to pass me some questions. So keep asking questions and keep saying hello. Uh, but let's get started. And of course, as you probably know, and also welcome to all of you that are here for the first time. Today is day number two, but don't worry about it. We're going to recap briefly what we've done yesterday. And then we're going to jump in in a brand new uh, compositing uh, exciting day using Illustrator, using Adobe Stock, and then putting everything together in Photoshop with this Adobe magic. Steve, your hey. Italian is rocking, man. It's like, keep messaging me. <laughs> <laughs> Un grande saluto in attesa del divertimento di oggi, which means... Um, saying hello and he's looking forward to having fun with us. You got to see, Yay. it's definitely going to be a fun one. You know, with this duo here, me and Julie, we're definitely going to have fun. Julie, I five, see if we got the right side. On the other side. Ah. <laughs> almost there, almost there, almost there, <laughs> did it. <laughs> As you can tell, we are in the same room. <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm we here. Are in, I'm in the same virtual room, but really we are, we in are in totally different, different places. 
<laughs> yes. And as you know, I enjoy having fun here with you and joking, but let's get serious. In order to get yeah. started and follow along with us, the best place to start is uh, my resources website. So Julia has been super kind sharing with you my studio, uh, which is Studio Per My Soul. And you can see there um, more the more commercial side of what I do in terms of websites, stationery, and you can have a look at my clients and the sort of work that I develop with them. But if you're more interested into the learning side, then I Am Claudie is the place to be. And in particular, to follow along this stream, you need to head on iamclaudie.com slash resources, and you'll be able to download the resources for yesterday and today composite. So as you can see, Colorful Composite is the title of this amazing two days stream in um, uh, compositing with those amazing graphic design apps. And day one was yesterday, we created this beautiful, uh, colorful portrait. And today we're gonna be creating some interior design. Just like yesterday, uh, I have provided for you the link to my CC library and the link to the starter files. In fact, if you click on these two uh, button, we'll be able to access some of the image that I used, but also images that I have not used when I was practicing my file, but perhaps we're going to use them today. Or I just thought that there would be a good idea maybe so you can personalize your, your composite while you are going to play around uh, with us in Photoshop. And as you can see, they're all here. Some of them are vectors, some of them are JPEG. But again, if that's your first day, you'll be able to um, catch along at what we were doing yesterday. And again, the link uh, to the library will have the color palette that I used and a, a lot of different elements that I've used in order to create this final that you see right here. And uh, we'll have fun together. So let's open Photoshop in order to get started. Let's and do this. Yes, and perhaps, Julie, I was mentioning before, um, let's get started from yesterday. So we have a little bit of a look at what we did and I actually left the file, I, I saved a copy of the file exactly at what, uh, at what we did yesterday. So we can have a little bit more of um, a catch up since, since I think we had to leave because we were just like about to be cut off. We were just like about to yeah. say goodbye <laughs> and we were still working. I know, it's always, it's always hard to stop, but uh, you know, once once you get into the flow, it's it's really hard to stop. It's it's just uh, so much fun. Oh, we got more Italian here. We see Biola saying took eight years of Italian classes. My teacher was fun. He insisted on calling me Valeria. <laughs> That's really funny. That's a very <laughs> typical Italian name. That's really funny. Okay, so let's see if there is any questions here. Um, so let's see what's going on here. Um, I can see Bila and that's it. I think that there's no question anymore. Yeah, I don't think, Fantastic. I think we're good. I think we can get started and, um, yeah, so cool guys. So make sure, um, to check out Claudie's site and if you want, feel free to follow along as she works so that you can learn at the same time and maybe you can ask questions if you have any in the process feel free to do that as well and i had actually spanish in school uh, yes <laughs> which was very beneficial because my husband now is uh is hispanic so it's really really beneficial for me <laughs> that's fantastic and now we're definitely a multicultural um stream yeah. and by the way speaking of multicultural stream let us know where you're streaming from yeah from. we always enjoy to know where everyone is from and um as i said before i'm in manchester UK and Julia is in Denver, Colorado. I'm so in Denver, we are Colorado. doing yes, so we are doing this amazing um, ultra oceanic. Is that you say like oceanic stream? Oh yeah, I believe, I believe, <laughs> I believe the, a stream over the ocean. <laughs> a stream over the ocean. That's what I meant. Thank you so much. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so yesterday cool. we played um, with this image composite and what we were doing here, we were trying to merge together all these images. I'm going to make sure that I head to the libraries and go to my colorful complete uh, composite library which is the library that we built yesterday um, of course if you um, go if you're watching us on behance.net slash live you can scroll down and I believe in the photography panel you'll be able to watch the replay in your own time so don't worry if you missed out you'll be, be able to watch it we talked a lot about uh, matching lights and brightness and lightness and also we were just about to change the color of this flower so as you can see we have created different levels with vector items and we changed the color of the scarf. We brought in the smoke in front, behind. We've done a lot of nice work. And I just wanted to add two little things before we start fresh with the new composite. And one um, was this little flower. So what I did yesterday is um, 
uh, downloaded from Adobe Stock directly from the Photoshop here. So all I did is search flower um, and then flowers and then go into my filters and selecting vectors. As you can see, all the vectors uh, stock from Adobe Stock was here. And the one that I've used is this one here called Vector Flora Set. Then Daddy, once have, I... Yes? We have so many people from different places. We have literally people from all over the world. We have Indonesia, Missouri, Central Florida, Poland, Canada, Philippines, Argentina. And That's exciting. Just want th to say thank you guys for sharing that. It's, it's so, so cool to know. And New Zealand is also in the house. I know you guys are from different time zones. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, I know someone, uh, some people have already, uh, you know, a uh, very late time of the day. So mm -hmm. it's cool that you're here. Yes, thank you so much for being here with us. So what I was saying here regarding the, um, the, the artwork, once you download the vector, you'll be able to find it into your library. And what I've done yesterday is simply double click on the vector. And what it does, it opens the actual file um, in Illustrator. It's asking you if it's scaling, it's okay. You just have to press okay. And as you can see, we have, oops, let me make sure that I've got this window looking right so you can actually see what's going on. Um, I've got this file into Illustrator and then I went and I start to change the color of the roses. And when you were happy with the color, all you have to do is to right click and click on Add to Library in order to bring it into your library. And as you can see, it will be ready to use in uh, Photoshop. So that's what we've done with this little flower here. But I was very unhappy of the color. I really didn't like the way that it was merging all together. So the beautiful thing of working, of, of working with a, um, items that are linked into the Creative Cloud Library. And you can also see it here if we zoom in into the actual preview of the layer. There is a little cloud that is telling us that there's a smart object, but it's connected into the library. So look what happens. Now, if you double click into your uh, layer, it opens the Photoshop layer in Illustrator. And this is because this is an Illustrator uh, graphic that we have uh, placed into our CC library and then then use them in Illustrator, in a Photoshop. That's the beauty of it. It's absolutely seamless. You can move from one app to the other without leaving the environment of your work. So literally, as you can see, what I did is to double click on the layer, on the layer preview, and look what happens here. So let's say that the color that I wasn't liking was this blue, because I think it creates too much contrast. Well, I'm going to click in, on my magic wand tool into Illustrator, select Select one color, and as you can see, uh, the magic one will bring up all the color with the same appearances and the same uh, color. And you can also, oops, you can also double click on your magic wand in order to refine the tolerance. So, for example, if I put here 70, there is a good chance that the magic wand will pick up also the other blue, as you can see. But in this case, I put it down to zero because I want to make sure that I uh, specifically uh, tuck tackle that single color so i don't i don't want I'm, i got zero tolerance i just want that one and then i'm gonna head back into my libraries and scroll down to our color palette now if you uh missed yesterday uh, stream and you don't know how to create the color themes don't worry we're gonna do that today again so uh just enjoy for now and we're gonna jump to that with the with the new um with the new composite in in few minutes so for example i'm gonna try uh, another um um purple color to see the way it looks like or maybe another pink just to make it a little bit easier on the eyes and I can do the same with these other uh, two colors here you can also alt shift in order to add more colors to your selection and then when you're done all you have to do is press command s in order to save your changes and uh, you can also press command w to close the file and look what happened when you jump back into photoshop it automatically uploads the new file with the changes so they, they are seamlessly connected if you work in illustrator you save the file and boom here it is i'm going to actually hide the clouds so you can see a little bit better here it actually changed the shape and that's i'm going to do it one more time without using the library because this works also when you create an asset yourself so i'm going to jump back into illustrator real quick and i'm going to create a shape 
by clicking on the rectangle tool, clicking and holding in order to create an ellipse. As you can see, the ellipse tool is here. You can also bring it up by pressing the letter L on your keyboard, then click and hold in order to create a circle and make sure to hold on shift to create a perfect circle. Then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, leave it white for now. And I'm gonna go ahead and search my swatches panel, which I have it here at the bottom. But if you want to find it, and for whatever reason you cannot find it into your workspace, you can always click on window and then find it here. Uh, all these panels are here, they're ordered in alphabetical order. So here it is, swatches, make sure that it's got a little tick on it. And here it is. And if for whatever reason you uh, close it and open it again, it will uh, bring it back. So you can click it as many times as you want. I can see in the chat, um, there is no question. Beautiful design. No questions so Sasha. far. Fantastic. I just want to make sure that we, sorry, <laughs> sorry, Julie. Along. I know, I know that you're there. I want to say hi, Carl. <laughs> nice to see you. I know that you're yeah, there. Julie. I was just asking everybody who is a newbie. So if you're a newbie, write newbie in the chat. Um, and there are some really interesting variations to that, like old B or ancient B. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so really that's funny. cool as well. Awesome. That's super funny. Thank you, Julie. So here, what we're doing, I'm tr trying to create like a more um, geometric feel just to create something interesting that will marry nice, uh, nicely with the rest of the theme that we have going on. So I'm really looking to replicate those stripes that I have on the bird. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, explore the swatches library by clicking on the icon at the bottom of the swatches library menu. And then I'm going to select patterns and then basic graphics and um lines let's go with the lines for this one and as you can see uh illustrator will open a new panel over here and i'm going to zoom in so you can have a nice look with the uh, lines and with the different distributions on lines on it as well it's really cool i'm going to go ahead for 40 percent and now that it's open let's uh, select our shape with the selection tool, which is the black arrow at the top of the tool bar here in Illustrator. And then all you have to do is select one of those stripes. Um, and here it is. It just changed the feel into this uh, new texture in this new pattern. Actually, it's not a texture, it's a pattern. Fantastic. But how do we match the color now? Because we don't really want it to have it uh, black because we want to make sure that everything works well to, together. That's that's the major point of creating a good composite, a professional composite, is to make sure that everything works well together. So first of all, I'm going to bring up my um, transform panel here from my window menu. And then I'm going to rotate those stripe of 45 degrees, just like that, just to give it a little bit more of movement. And then I'm going to uh, select object and expand in order to be able to edit the actual uh, stripes, because at the moment they are like masked inside the shape and click on OK. And then I'm going to do it one more time. So we expand the fill. And as you can see now, if I double click into our shape, we'll be able to select the single stripes. But let's use um, our magic wand once again so we can select all the stripes together. So if I click on the magic wand and then select select one of the stripes because they're all from the same color, I can now work with them at the same time. So let's go ahead and change the color. I'm gonna simply click and select one of the color uh, from our color themes that we loaded before from Photoshop and then click outside or you can click on this little arrow out here in order to exit uh, the isolation mode and the, from the group and then exit again. And here it is. We created a graphic that has a nice pattern and is scalable because it's a vector graphic that we created directly here in Illustrator. Now, if you scale it, make sure to hold shift so it scales proportionally. And then all we have to do is to right click and add it to our library. Make sure that you're working in the current library here. So Colorful Composite was the library that we used yesterday. And once you jump back into Illustrator, boom, here it is. All I have to do is to click and drag it into my uh, composite and then I can scale it. Remember, in order to scale it here in Illustrator, you do in Photoshop, you do not need uh, to hold shift. I believe this was introduced in um, Creative Cloud 2019. Julia, correct me if I'm wrong. I but love I the that... way I love the way yeah. the lines kind of melt with the smoke because they they have the same yes. color. So it gives us really really great transition. I love it. I love it. I'm so happy you like it. Yeah. So, and yeah. and also and also in the chat we're talking right now about um, the youngest of our students here. Um, so we have Van Dam who is only 10 years old. Oh, who is hi, a regular Van Damme. here. 
yes. who is a regular here and we have lee who is uh we believe uh his sister um yes so it's really really cool i was just asking the question who of you guys is 18 and younger because i think it's so so cool if you guys start learning at a very early age and it's so amazing to me i'm really really feeling inspired by kids that are so motivated and to learn skills so and so also early. so lucky because so cool. the software now are so amazing that they're yeah, super and so much lucky. more easy to learn yeah <laughs> yes. they, they definitely started learning at a really good time i really That's wish that time. when i was younger i had all the power in those machines software got so much better and I think they have a great opportunity and of course they do an amazing job in being here because that's a fantastic place to start so i think that i'm happy with uh, uh how we got so far with this one what probably what i'll do here is to um press shift command option e in order to create a copy of all the layers and i'm going to place it on top and here it is so we have a copy with all of them and if you want you can uh, right click in order to get quick exported as a PNG in order to save your file. And let's just do that. So we have an idea. So what I did is again, use the shortcut shift option command E on Mac, which is shift alt control E on windows. And then I'm going to do it one more time and I'm going to zoom in so you can see it right click on the layer because now we have created a layer that contains all uh, merged the layer below and actually all the layers that are there in the layer panel and then i'm going to click on quick export as a png you can this is very useful when uh, i work fast and i need to export something real quick i can just select the layer and export that single I like doing that too yeah yes super fun and then i'm going to call this one um color comp day one and fantastic. I'm going to save it on my desktop. And here it is. I'm, I'm pretty happy with uh, the work that we've done yesterday. I think we are ready to, to work on a new company. Let us know in the chat if you perhaps wanted to add anything else. Or I think we're done with this one. What do you think, Julie? Oops, let's go ahead. Yeah, and I think them. I think it looks really, really good. Let's, uh, let's ask the chat. What are you guys thinking? Keith is saying good morning, ladies. Good morning. <laughs> Hi, Keith. Nice to see you. Lovely to and see Claudia, you. And Claudia, we were talking in the chat about um, what age everybody started kind of designing or working in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. So what, like, I, how, when did you start working in Photoshop? Just, That's I'm very... just trying, we're just trying to understand yes. how long it takes, you know, to learn it. So let's see, let's see if I have, um, let, let's see if I, if I have this one ready for you, Julie. <laughs> so <laughs> oh the graffitis um, i remember it's yes. such a cool thing i love it yes yeah. I'm, I'm not sure that i've got the folder loading here let's see if i let's see if i can find it oh it looks like my my external art disk is not loading at the moment well, but we can still try it in a second second if it comes up so the reason why i was looking for it is because i'm actually quite new compared to um, majority of people that have been working in the industry. I've not started, uh, I think it's five years, six years that I've now started to uh, to work uh, in graphic design. I, my previous life, I used to work in PR um, and uh, I kind of quit at the highest of my career. And I was still, I will say still kind of youngish. Um, I used to work at the UN and um, in term, as, a, as a communicator, public communicator. So I was more into the marketing side of things. But then, and what I wanted to show you, hopefully it's going to be able to load it yeah. in a second. I have um, seen it. It's totally worth seeing. I, 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 it's, yeah. it's such an amazing image. <laughs> well, hopefully, hopefully my I can I can feel my hard disk uh, moving, but I don't know if it's gonna if it's actually gonna show up. If not, we're gonna post it later on Discord so we can have a laugh. I'm just gonna. It's interesting. It we have people who started in PageMaker and uh, Quark mm -hmm. and all the different software. And what was your first design software to use, Claudie? My first design software? software was InDesign. Mine too. I come, Mine as well. Yes, I come from yeah. a print background, so well, it yeah. looks like our photo is not here. My so first, sorry. my first uh, gra uh, graphic designs were actually editorial for university because I was studying industrial design and we had to document wow. our work and and give a presentation, a printed presentation of our work. So oh, I didn't it was know kind that. of so like that was your. So it, was, it, it, it was the first time that I've actually started creating design files and working with, you know, typefaces, layout and so on. And then I got into Illustrator um, and got more into depth. And that was super, super cool. And Photoshop, I usually use for photo retouching. I not very often do, do photo compositing. Sometimes when I have to manipulate the photos, 
I uh, do it as well in Photoshop. But um, yeah, it's very interesting. Let us know in the chat, guys, what's your design uh, story? Uh, I think I found the folder. I think I found the Yay, folder. Yay, that's so cool. Maybe we can have a little bit of fun. Oh, Hopefully. yeah, I see it. I see it already. This is so cool. <laughs> um, you know the photo that I'm looking for? I mean, I have different yeah. photo in design, but it's one with my very, very first piece. And hopefully it's yeah. here and, and hopefully guys are, uh, <laughs> it's fun for you to see. But um, let me see. Otherwise, I can show you something else. Oh, here. my gosh. Matt, so is that saying, was... Matt is yep. saying that he started uh, in Mac Paint. Oh, wow. Draw, cricket draw. Yep. Yep. Oh, my God. Illustrator I was a fan 88. there. <laughs> And Cornell is saying started in Photoshop, then went to Illustrator and then to InDesign. And oh, Angela wow. saying started in Photoshop when I was 20. Nice. So they have more experience than us. Yeah. So here it is. I actually, interesting. I actually found the photos and I'm going to spend three seconds because I spent way too much time. So that was me starting in graphic design. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh this is so cool <laughs> that was my very first piece and uh that's me starting to play with outlines strokes and then became a uh, uh, illustrator illustrator very very quickly because i started to trace my drawings and then mm -hmm. i started to become a little bit more el elaborate and today actually that's a probably a, a best photo uh, for a reference because today we're going to use a, a fantastic tool in photoshop which is the burn and the dodge tool and we're going to actually take inspiration from this photo so you can see how much there is a shadow on this side and the highlight and we're gonna play with burn and dodge in order to shape objects in photoshop so let's stop the silliness it was a fun nice moment i think we're good to go with this one <laughs> let's get to work yeah <laughs> before but we actually close the file uh, something that i uh, always suggest to do when we when you think you're done you're never done i guess that's that's always the case um when you're designing there's always something to do and what i've done here is right click on the layer in order to uh, uh convert it into a smart object and then what i usually do just to give final touches is to jump into my uh, filter and then ca camera row filter and then what i'll do um i like to uh, go into uh my oops sorry into my details and sharpen a little bit the image um and then i make sure i saw I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm still getting familiar with this new um, uh, Photoshop 2020 camera row. I think it's very compact. I think they've done a fantastic job, but I'm still um, looking for all the tools here. But again, what I was saying is I'll, I'll bring in a little bit of the grain. I perhaps add a little bit of vignetting. Those are the things that I do uh, just in the end when I want to adjust an image. And something that is worth mentioning is also that the superpower or camera low, row, if at the very last minute you decide to perhaps that you want to shift you and you're not too happy with the blue that you were using, you want to make it a bit of a lighter, lighter you, um, you can actually change use. And as you can see, super, super easy. You can make the purple more purple. You can turn the green into a more bluish color. And it's just fantastic the way that it works so you can see especially here with the blue changing and i think that's a perfect to tool for this kind of aqua. images where or photography where you have a lot of color going on let's say you have a blue background and you want to change it to yellow you can do it right away it's super super easy yes absolutely but let's get started because we got a lot of work to do so that was my last final piece of advice on this sort of artistic um um, sort of uh, uh, compositing and I am now going to jump in this day number two. So believe it or not, the starter file for these um, composite is, I'm going to show you by sharing the colorful composite number two, is this image here. So that's where we're going to start. We're going to start from uh, this image, which has got pretty much the only thing that we kept is the wall and the table. We're going to start from here and we're going to build um, a, new, uh, a new room just like that. See the difference? It's like quite a, quite a big uh, change of, uh, of interior design. What do you think, Julie? Just uh, just a bit yeah. of rede redecorating from an yeah, empty really nice. room. I love interior design. I was actually, before I, st I started studying in industrial design, I was actually thinking to study interior design because I thought it was so cool. I think that a lot of people that are into design have these... Uh, have these uh like eye for interiors that is yeah. always super cool and graphic design and interior design go so well together fantastic so i said fantastic we need to i need to give a, a fantastic. dollar for every fantastic i need to set up a little fantastic button on my stream deck so that i can always 
push the button and it goes fantastic yeah. fantastic do you want me to <laughs> record it so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yes please can we do that <laughs> that'll be fun okay so i was about to say fantastic again but anyway and, let's get you know started. you know how howard has his boop yeah he always does his boop <laughs> <laughs> yes, everyone's got it's their so own fun. little yeah. little little noises. Yeah. So I think you work better by making noises. It's like you know when you when you do like um yeah. taekwondo and you go like Wah! it just gives you energy. Yeah, exactly. Or the <laughs> tennis all... players that go like ah, ah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's open a new file here by going to the home and click on create new. I'm gonna set up my intent to uh, web. And um, I'm going to use a web large, which is a 1920 by 1080, the standard high um, um, HD video. I believe that's what um, uh, YouTube uses as well. So that's the one that I usually use. Make sure that you click on it so you can see the width and the height changes. And I'm going to call this file comp day two. And I'm going to press on create. Now, for those of you that were not with us yesterday, if you want to learn on how to bring in the images, all you have to do is to click on the down pointing arrow. And bear in mind, if you do not have your libraries panel in your workspace, all you have to do is just like it, we were doing before in Illustrator, click under window and make sure that your libraries are ticked and you can see the panel libraries is here. Then under the search bar, you will have a little um, drop down menu, click on the uh, pointing down arrow and go into new create new library, just right here. Click on the plus in order to uh, open a new library. All you have to do is rename it. I'm gonna name this one test three and I'm going to click on create and all you have to do here is perhaps if you have downloaded the file that I provided for you which um let me see I don't know where I put it. I'm just going to go into my download folder here and perhaps I'm just going to bring in this file that's um it's just a random file no matter no matter what uh, file you bring let's actually make sure that is um okay I'm just going to use this file over here which is again a file that I uh, downloaded from Adobe stock if you have it in your computer and you want to use that just search the folder and click and drag into your library and that's a way in which you can import uh, an image into your library and it syncs automatically or you can directly search into Adobe stock here using the search bar so like we were doing before so in this case will be modern interiors and as you can see making sure that you got uh, photos into your filters because this is the beautiful uh, thing of um, Adobe stock it actually allows you to filter the sort of output you use so photos illustration vectors video 3ds uh, premium will be um, special edition files and then editorial so as you can see here we can select any file that we think is relevant for us if you like an image all you have to do to test them and save a preview is click on the little plus icon and then when you're ready and you think that that's the right image for you all you have to do is to click on the little cart in order to license it but there is also something super cool here uh, that when you um, let's say I love this one with the pink smoke but it's not the right image I wanted to find something similar all you have to do is to right click and click on find similar and Adobe stock will start gearing up and searching in order to find some similar images and again you can click on vector ones or photos and um, it will refine your research so right now I already provide the library and I've done a lot of research already so we can work on this colorful composite number two and as I said I'm gonna start in by working in with this um, yellow decorative chair um image so all i have to do is to bring it in oh i and love the chair looks so super cool. cool isn't it i'm gonna unfortunately gonna get rid of it <laughs> sorry wait is I that like yours it well. no it's not mine um i'm gonna get rid of from the photo uh, see that's the we're gonna replace it with a send with it a to me one. <laughs> i'll take it <laughs> we'll take I'll, well, I'll send it to you julian just just the curse the ocean just the curse the ocean <laughs> So um, there are a few different ways in which we can proceed in order to um, remove this image over here. The first one will be to uh, click on our selection tool and then click and drag into our image and go ahead under edit and work with the content aware field. Now, as you can see, the content aware field is 
um, in gray, that means that we cannot select it. If you're wondering why that's the case, as you can see, we have a, um, a smart object. In this case, is uh, the image is still linked to the image that we downloaded from Adobe Stock. So in order to be able to use the Content Aware field, all you have to do is to right click on the photo and make sure that you rasterize your layer. And now that you created your selection, and also remember, in order to use Content Aware field, you always need to have a selection. All you have to do is to go under Edit and Content Aware field came up. So you can actually uh, bring up the Content Aware field workspace and you I can I love start it. It's one of my favorite tools, honestly. And especially if you have a photo where you need to fill in the background, let's say the backdrop was too short or something like that, you can mm -hmm. fill in the, the backspace so easily. I was honestly, I was hired once it's, it's no joke. I was hired by an agency to extend the background of an artwork. <laughs> and all I did was I just applied content to where fill. It's super, super fun. I feel super really fun. bad, but it's just smart. Why, why would I spend so well, much time? Well, if you know how to work, you know? that's, that's the beauty of working smart. That's a, that's the a beauty about knowing, knowing your tools. And that's and it did it so much them. better. It did it so much better than I would ever have th had done it manually. So I was just so happy. I literally spent five minutes <laughs> or less on the image. So what I wanted to show, so, sorry, Julie, go ahead. No, I, I just feel a little bad about it, but mm, uh, the, really smart the, about your work. Yes, yeah. you, you Paco is smart. saying smarter, not harder. Yeah, that's that's so right. Yeah, Carol say don't ever tell her. Paco is saying <laughs> work smarter, not harder. Completely agree. <laughs> But yeah. there are also cases like in this one in which it becomes a little bit harder. So um, for all of you who can work smarter with this amazing tool, and by the way, if this is your first time uh, using uh, the Content Aware field, probably the color of your selection is going to be uh, green or yellow. I don't remember which one is the original one, but you can click here. I like my pink, so I change it into pink. Um, and then all you have to do is to use the brush here in order to sample. In fact, it's called sampling brush. Yeah, and I believe that yours should look like green, just something similar like that. And then you can uh, use the sampling brush, making sure that it's on the little plus here on top of the menu bar in order to add area to your selection that you can sample from. And if you want to remove an area, uh, you can click on the minus and you can remove the area. Now, so what exactly, keep... what exactly will help you to find the right area? So you're looking for something that is surrounding the element. So for example, if here I have all this line, I will perhaps um, press option in order to switch between uh, the um, a plus and the minus. So in this case, I'm removing area from uh, two samples and I'm really trying to uh, stick to an area that represent more uh, the pixel that I'm gonna have to go and replace. And um, as Julia said before with our work, that was actually working fantastic. But if we click on okay, that it doesn't do, and I know that I've not spent too much work. You can definitely refine it and get a better result. Uh, but what I wanted to show you here is that we usually tend to go on the uh, tools that make us work, uh, work smarter because they are super amazing, but are, there are also fantastic techniques. So it's not also always about the tool, but always, always about is also about the technique. I needed to get You can make the today. tool even better, although it's already good by applying a good yes. technique, right? Yes, correct. So in this case, and again, you could have been refining it. We could have been going into uh, the clone stamp tool, into uh, the spotilling brush. There are plenty of ways to get it right. But actually, I wanted to show you another way of thinking when you got replaced, when you have to replace um, an object and some pixels in an area and you have so much white space place here. So in this case, what I'm going to do is simply click on my selection tool, because sometimes just to work in a more simple way, it makes it sometimes faster. But again, the reason why I'm showing you the different in techniques is because you always need to be looking at your images. There is never a yes or no answer. Everything uh, relates to what you're actually doing and the image that you're working with. So in this case, all I'm doing here is to click and make a selection of the panels, uh, roughly the size of the chair. Maybe I should get a little bit more of the floor as well, just like so. And then with our image selected, I'm gonna press Command J in order to duplicate this area. So as you can see here in this layer, all I have are these little panels. And then I'm gonna press Command T and I'm gonna move it over here 
but as you can see the color here is not matching perfectly because we have a little bit of a lighter color towards the table so what i'm going to be doing here is the right click and then flip horizontally so as you can see the colors are a little bit better here and uh, of course we grab some pixels that were next to the table so of course if we use the pixel that are next to the table that will make it a little bit easier and what we have to do with this image because they are pretty straight lines is to make sure that we match the top line oops and I'm going to use my top and bottom arrow from the keyboard, just like so. And then I'm going to click on return once I've roughly covered the right area. You can also, again, press on Command T to transform and hold the shift. If you want to perhaps tilt it a little bit because it looks like it was uh, took with a little bit of perspective, just like so. Then I'm going to, with the with the new layer selected, which has got uh, the copy of the panel, I'm going to click on the mask. And from the mask, I'm going to use my brush by um, having a normal brush with the um, 175 size i think that's a good size but making sure that the hardness is to zero so we can paint in black and uh, we can start to hide some pixels here to make sure that we bring our table back just like so and then we don't really need this part and we don't need this side neither so perhaps something that i should have done and i'm gonna uh actually press on X to swap between the, the fill and the, um, sorry, the, 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 the top fill and the background, back, background color, the foreground <laughs> and, the, and the background color in order to bring in a little bit of the pixel of the image. So I'm painting in uh, white right now. Uh, all I have to do, and I completely forgot to do that, is to bring the opacity down because not only we need to match the top at the bottom, but we also have to match the little panel stripe. So in this case, perhaps I want to match um, this one here, just like so. Um, so we have the top and the bottom matching, but as you can see, we now also have uh, the little rectangle matching there. You see, before it was definitely off. Um, and then uh, when you're done, all you have to do is to bring back the opacity to 100%. And then you can proceed oops, to paint in the mask. And again, um, I'm going to swap between uh, the foreground color. You, and were I'm gonna saying, bring, you were saying something short and smart about um, white being adding uh, the stuff, adding the um, color or whatever you're painting, and black uh, removing it, right? Can you repeat that again? Yesterday, um, you said something really, really short and smart. Oh, I really, really love oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So white reveal, black conceal. Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, so remember, <laughs> when white you have reveal, a... White reveal, black conceal. It's something you need to have as a poster in your in your office yes. or in front of your desk to, to always remember. It's always so helpful to know, especially Fantastic. if you're a beginner. Um, I think to understand Photoshop and how these things work is so fundamental because then you start understanding all the tools and how they work and how you can kind of tweak uh, tweak and modify the function of the tools actually to use them in a different way. So um, I think yes. that's like the first thing, one of the first things you really need to learn about Photoshop. And what I'm doing here is now trying to make sure that I bring back uh, the right amount of pixels so I get the chair covered, but I don't um, um, I don't mess up the entire the entire uh, compositing here. So like, as you can see here, I've got a little bit of the table covered. So in this case, again, I'm going to press X to swap and I'm going to make sure that the table stays out. And uh, there are two things in particular that perhaps need to be fixed. First of all, the lighting, because it looks like, of course, that is not matching and we're going to do that with the levels in a second, making sure that we lighten uh, this pixel over here. But another thing that you probably, and I want to, I don't know if anyone said it in the chat, but um, you got to keep your eyes into the details is that now because we flipped it, all this little panel, as you can see, have the shadow on the right, but because it's we reverse. flipped it, yeah. the shadow on the left. Well, that's not big of a problem. All you have to do is to go into your um, side. We don't need it. I'm going to just show it for once because I'm going to put a chair over there. So that's why I'm not too bothered about making this one looks perfect. I just need to make sure that there is continuity on it. But mm -hmm. perhaps let's do it with this one that is uh, the closest one. All you have to do is to click into your selection tool and then make a selection that is roughly the side um, of the little uh, indent in the panel and then press Command T, exactly what we did before, right click and flip horizontal, boom, 
and there it is. Hey. So um, you can keep doing that and um, you have absolutely a much better looking composite. So whenever you flip an image, you always got to look at your light. You always got to look at your shadows because otherwise uh, people can find out pretty easily that you got photoshopped an image. As you can see, it takes literally a second. Again, I'm not going to do it for all of them. Probably I'm going to do it just one more time. And in this case, it looks like I've done a little bit of a um, uh, wider uh, selection if you want to contract your selection of just few pixels oh or just perhaps lose it completely <laughs> like i just did and i was saying a really cool thing right now he's saying black is like a shadow so it hides and white color is considered as a light so it shows yes. yeah that's also an interesting way to remember it white that's conceal exactly it. black re uh, white reveal black conceal Exactly. So what I'm doing here in order to contract my shapes of uh, my selection of few uh, pixels, I'm going to go under select, modify, contract. And as you can see, I can contract it by uh, perhaps two pixels. I think it's fine and click on OK. And my uh, selection just got a tiny bit smaller, so I don't have to make it again and perhaps get it wrong. And again, command T and right click and then flip horizontal so you'll be able to fix uh, the issue with the light. I'm gonna let you finish it off. Um, and, uh, oh, perhaps it was just one, just one to do. Should we do it? Just just, just do it real quick. That tells you how obsessed <laughs> I am with this thing. That's the, that's the perfectionist in you, Claudia. Uh, I, I mean, if it were more than one, I would have not done it because just for the sake of time, but it's just one. <laughs> if it was two, you wouldn't have done it, but it's just yes. one, so. <laughs> yes. And then what I'm gonna do here in order to match the lights is uh, making sure that I click on the red layer and click on my uh, adjustment layer here. And uh, I'm gonna click on my levels. And again, remember what we done yesterday, we talked about uh, the, the darker pixels here um, in the input. So those um, are tel telling us where are the darkest pixels and this is the gradient of the output. So this is, this is telling us that the darker pixels are black. And if you wanna make them lighter, all you have to do is to bring the output a little bit towards uh, the white. And as you can see, everything starts to become a little bit lighter. And then all you have to do is to bring the white a little bit here towards uh, the center in order to make the image lighter. Now this is affecting overall the entire image. If you wanna make sure that you only affect the layer below, press um, op hold option on the Mac, that's Alt on Windows. And bring your mouse in between the layers and I'm going to zoom in so you can see what's happening. So our little hand here, if we press option, <laughs> turns into a little square with a down pointing arrow. And that's the same symbol that we have here below the panel that allows you to create a clipping mask. So a clipping mask only affects the layer below. And as you can see, I think we overdid it. <laughs> so there are two ways you can either um, break oh. down your positive on your layers. What's going on? I agree with Noor. This looks really cool. I mean, it's, uh, the balance is so much better now. And Noor is also saying, wait, I just want to make more coffee and the chair is no more. <laughs> the <laughs> chair, the is, chair gone. is gone. <laughs> Absolutely. Fantastic. Anyway, I balance. love coffee. Send us send us some coffee emojis. If you guys love coffee, please let us know. <laughs> yes, I needed coffee today. I, I that was one thing that I should have should have brought in. So I'm okay. gonna call um probably I'm gonna bring everything in here in this layer. And I'm going to call this one background. And I'm going to make sure that I bring my layer down by pressing command and left curly bracket. We bring our chair down. And I think that I really overdid it with these levels. Um, so what I can perhaps do is to like really bring the opacity down of the levels because it looks yeah, like that's what I, always do. I went a little bit overboard but again like i'm not too too fast i know that i should spend more time on it i'm not too bothered with it because i'm going to place another chair there so um it always stays editable i'm going to leave it there for now and then i can always yeah. come back to it exactly. i'm going to make sure that i save my file before we start to do all this work so press command s and i'm going to place this comp day too and uh, we have some coffee emojis here going on in the chat Ooh. Oh, everyone loves coffee <laughs> Yeah, Fantastic. I cannot start my day without coffee. Honestly, guys, uh, some of you who follow me on Instagram know I always have those like coffee preparing uh, stories and then I start dancing out of nowhere. <laughs> it's so cool. I, I mean, I love coffee. It's just, uh, it just gives me so much energy. I feel like generally I'm more on like the lower, the more relaxed side as a person. Mm -hmm. And coffee just helps me to go a little bit, you know, 
up in my emotion. <laughs> Get excited. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole point. So what I've done here in the meantime, I uh, went back into my library. So we were here in our composite and then I double click into the antique letter uh, photos that I provided and it opens up in a new um, in, in a new file. So we're going to start by creating the selection in this new file. There is no need to start to bring in too much um, object into our final composition. What I did there is uh, using our object selection tool, which is our amazing selection tool that it was introduced, I believe, just last year during Max 2000 and 2020. I don't even know what year we're now. Max 2020, which um, I believe so. I don't even know what's going on. Julia, help me. How old am I? What's my name? I'm lost. <laughs> I'm lost in time. So um, <laughs> with the object selection tool, we'll be able to uh, quickly, very quickly, I'm going to do it again. Um, I'm going to press Command D in order to deselect the pixels. And then if you click and drag, look what happens here. Super amazing Sensei finds out pretty much 95% of the image. All you have to do is to all the shift and drag on the image to make sure that we select the pixel that we left behind. Just like so, fantastic. Once you're happy with your selection, all you have to do is to uh, make a mask. And then I'm gonna press Command C and then go back into my composition and press Command V to paste my Ooh. chair. And then I'm gonna press Command T in order to resize it. And probably what I should have done, and actually I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna create a smart object. So I'm gonna right click on the image, convert it to smart object and then press Command C and go back into the layer and press Command V to bring it in. And as you can see, we have a much neater file over here. And that's the chair, chair coming Yay. up. So cool. And the lighting fits so perfectly also. It comes from the same yes. direction, which is also so important when you're compositing uh, images that you have the lighting coming from the same side. Yes, lighting and perspective are the most important thing. So yeah, the perspective is also sure. looking fine. Um, it looks like there I missed quite a lot of things, but don't worry because we're working with a smart object. We can always come back in here. And in order to refine your mask, you can click on select a mask. And that's the with the onion view that our onion skin view that I was mentioning yesterday, you can make sure that uh, bring your transparency to see, for example, see the, the leg at the back disappear. So I need to make sure that I bring it in. And I believe there is a little bit of the um, harm chair here that we need to build in. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna and leave the, the front leg. The front leg on the right is also oh, it's long. got a little bit of yes. the reflection. Absolutely yeah. well spotted. And, and guys, we only have 40 minutes until the daily creative <gasps> challenge review. What? So, oh my so gosh. make sure, <laughs> so make to sure to submit, <laughs> make sure to submit your daily creative challenges onto our discord. Uh, I believe Cody is going to uh, post a little link for you guys. So it's easier to access. So make sure to stay tuned in the chat or otherwise you can go onto the challenge tab above the chat where you will find all information, where to submit, how to submit and what to submit. So we are looking forward to review those, Claudia and I. Yes. So That's now I'm so gonna nice. be very I'm gonna be very rough with the with the with the mask in here. You can take your time, zoom in. As you can see, I'm using uh, the little brush tool here to bring uh, all the elements in. And uh, you know, take your time, zoom in. So I know that there are a lot of pixels missing here. Um, so if you zoom in and then you're brushing in, you can see it. If you perhaps want to see it a little bit better, make sure that you play with your transparency so you can see the elements that are missing a little bit better. So I can see that here I'm missing a little bit of the chair. And then if you want to create a straight line to work faster, just click one with the brush, Alt Shift and click again. And as you can see, you'll be able to create a little bit of um, a, a straighter set selection with your brush. Okay, I'm definitely not gonna spend too much time on this one because we got a ton of things to do. And uh, once you're done, make sure to click on save and then command V to close your file and it gets automatically updated here. Yay. into your file so, so much more so much work we haven't done yet <laughs> i know <laughs> right? we haven't, you know that we meme? Not done. <laughs> there is this meme of this lady standing like in a super chaotic office and this is how i sometimes feel yeah but it's good that, to have work to do otherwise it would be boring if there was no work to do absolutely do so it, it looks like the chair is a little bit floating at the moment so i'm gonna make sure that i place it a little bit lower here maybe make it a little bit bigger just like so by dragging on the bounding box usually the coffee table or these little tables are at the almost at the size of the um, 
how you call it of, of the place where you put the arm the arm arm post of the chair so this looks like a uh, a decent side make sure always to look at your proportion now uh, i'm gonna create some shadows real quick and then i'm gonna stay tuned because i'm gonna show you a mind-blowing way of you know, creating pattern because we're gonna start to create a little uh wallpaper here for Ooh. our for our um that's so background. cool nor yeah. is saying uh i bet we can find some lost coins in that old sofa <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. And a lot of bread crumbles. That's what I usually find in my couch. And a lot <laughs> and of peanuts. cut fair. Cut fair on mine as well. Oh, yeah. And mine will be dog fur, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm doing here is creating a new layer by clicking on the little square with the plus and bring it under the chair. And then I'm going to jump into my brush. Make sure that I have a, a decent size, like uh, perhaps 100, maybe a little bit more. That's too much gonna work with 156 mm -hmm. something like that and then uh, zero hardness because I really want a soft brush here and I'm gonna use a uh, black in order to uh, paint the shadows and all I'm doing here is literally uh, painting in and I know that looks horrible at the moment but don't worry about it <laughs> uh, we're gonna worry about it in a second I'm gonna start to build some shadows here and actually gonna fix that bad now something that is very important that i'm going to talk in a second are the contact shadows looks like contact the couch is, is is smoking from the bottom <laughs> yes like a little couch train contact shadow <laughs> happen at the very at the very bottom uh, where the object is in contact um with the, the surface so we'll be able to uh, perhaps add them later or you can uh, start to work already by painting them with a way smaller brush so you can literally contour um the edge but i usually like to place them on top so i'm gonna work on them in a second once you're done here make sure that you click on the layer and click on our fantastic layer mask and then what i'll do i'll bring the opacity down and I'm going to set my layer to uh, multiply. And then what I will do here is to um, uh, make sure that I've got the black selected still so I can hide those pixels and go back and select my brush tool, select the mask and start to make the brush bigger by using the right uh, curly bracket. And I'm going to start to um, a little bit hide all these pixels that we don't want to see so whatever it was a little bit too dark and we don't need it so for example we lost a lot of our little table i'm gonna zoom in here uh, because it looks like that our table is lost is lovely highlight here and i'm gonna make a smaller brush using the left curly bracket oops here it is and i'm gonna bring our table back now i'm working with the mouse guys so uh be patient with me i'm gonna keep switching between uh hiding and showing pixels and you can do that using the x shortcut mm -hmm. um but um and of course the selection is not perfect uh, i would have definitely spent much more time both to match the lighting of the wall and uh, with the selection but i'm trying to show you as many techniques as possible so you can take all your time mm -hmm. afterwards in order to uh, really refine them so and Claudia, yep, do you have any tips how to create the perfect shadow? Because I know close to the leg, it has to be the darkest, right? Yeah. And then it that, kind of spreads out. That's exactly so what I was. Do you uh, have any? Do you have any tips how to? Um, how that's to what I was that? uh, talking about before. So I okay. usually do the back shadow before, and then for the contact, that's what I was saying in terms of the contact shadow. So the very first tip will be to observe. So literally, I wait for the time of the day in which there are lights, there are eating objects, or just. Uh, turn on a bulb and use a glass uh, very simple so the very 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 first um, uh, step is to use i think it was galileo scientific method step number one observing Obs that, would, that should be yeah. your your very first step and then you can build some rough shadow just like so uh, at the back and then what i usually do i create something very similar just creating a new layer at the top and what I'll do um, is to use a way smaller brush in order to paint those so-called contact shadows. And the contact shadows sit just around the object and they usually are in two directions. So they're very small, they're very close, they're very dark, and they usually move slightly in two directions, in front and at the side. So that's what I'm doing here, like literally painting on the side and a little bit this one goes on the side here so they go in and uh and below so just like here in this case it's gonna go below here and then a little bit behind inside and again here uh you can bring the opacity down so it's not that rough and then set it to multiply 
just like multiply so. helps you to get the texture from the background right so if you have Correct. this uh, wooden floor or marble floor so it helps you to kind of translate that shadow into the texture as well yes so really and then helpful. you can also change it as much as you want okay so let's start to uh, bring in a little bit more and i know again like i would have probably uh, messed about here a little bit more so uh with this shadow over here i'm gonna make my brush bigger and the reason why i work with a, such a bigger brush is because when it's smooth it allows you to um do a better job in terms of hiding details so it doesn't look like very very rough so i think that's a little bit better and mm -hmm. also there is a fantastic way which we're gonna look at it in a second with the plant um there is not only black and white if you black hide the pixels in the mask and white reveals them what do you think the gray does gray partially reveals them so there is another build another great way of building shadow perhaps you don't want to bring in fully this black look what happened if i just paint in white um with our brush tool it comes very very dark but look what happens if i just set my color to gray it brings them in but less so we are partially showing and that's the beauty of using the mask and the color so you don't always use black and white you can also use other uh, color in the grayscale in order to create a grayscale when you uh, bring in pixels so uh, black and reveals yeah. sorry black black conceals white reveals and everything mm -hmm. in the middle of course uh go like as a gradient the more you go yeah. towards the black the more you hide the more you go towards yeah. the white the more you show awesome and what if you use color what does it do to the to the shade or what would it do to the mask? Well, I think that in that case, it will still uh, look at the brightness. So look at that. When we are in the mask, oh, you cannot okay. select the color. You know so what it's I mean? all it about the brightness, take... huh? Yes, yes, correct. It will just take all about grayscale. Yeah, yes. makes yes, sense. Correct. Yes, ma'am. Cool. Fantastic. So it looks like they were done for now. I strongly invite you to spend more time, but I'm very, very excited to show you these amazing tricks with our pattern. I think you guys will like it. Hi, yes. Isa. Nice to see you. Good morning, yeah. team. Sorry, I'm not looking at the chat too much today. See me back like it's missing. You were right. We brought him in. Fantastic. <laughs> So I'm going to have to stop here because I'm attempting to refine it more and more, but I usually spend hours. So I'm just going to leave it like that for now. Probably yeah, gonna... you can go really into detail. Isis is also saying this is so helpful. Thanks. I'm yeah, glad you're happy what with we're it. Here for. We are so, here to learn from each other. So yes, this is really good, really good way to kind of connect and learn. One of the things oh. that I provided, sorry, Julie, I'm just no really trying to pack in. I'm really excited about this part. Yeah, 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 go ahead. One go of ahead. the things that I provided is this uh, vector file with the little leaves. And uh, what I've done here, again, just simply going to Adobe Stock and I have done a uh, leaf and then isolate, which is going to give me a leaf that is on a white background if it's a photo. Oh, this is the image that I use, by the way. But if you're looking for vectors, um, here it is. You can just write leaf and um, the one that I use should be one of those here but i mean you'll find it in your in your library again if you just if you just tune in remember you can go on my website i am cloudy.com resources and um just over here you'll be able to get the starter file in order to play with us here so uh what i'm gonna do before moving on let's go back into uh, photoshop is to uh, bring up the uh, library that we were using with this the colorful composite number two and i'm going to double click in open in order to open this new illustrator file and as we did before just by double clicking into our image it will open a new vector a new uh, illustrator file so um all i'm doing here is selecting one of those leaves you can select whichever one you want i, I thought that this one uh would give a, a nice space select it with your black arrow press option and then drag oops make sure that you select the right thing and not the background so select <laughs> the leaves and you'll be able to see that you selected when you have the bounding box around the object and then press option on mac that's alt on windows in order to create a copy then when you create a copy uh, we can jump back into our libraries and again if you don't see the libraries you can find it under the window menu and then all you have to do you can drag it into our library and it creates a new object or you can right click on it and click on to add to library so now that we go back into photoshop as you can see we have our leaves here that is already been updated and look what happens so what i'm going to do here is, is first of all to go on the top layer and i'm actually going to group the chair and hold shift to select both layers and press command g to group 
and I'm going to call the group chair. And something that I like to do when I build um, composite that have many different items is also to color code it. So all you have to do is to right click and I'm going to uh, make the chair layers uh, orange and I'm going to right click into the background and I'm going to make it uh, yellow. So I have an understanding on what I'm working with. So as I said, I'm going to click on the leaf that is in my libraries and drag it into my file. Then in order to have an isolated view of the leaf, all you have to do is to press option on the Mac, which is all the windows and click on the little eye icon and look what happens. Everything disappears. And the only thing that you can see is our leaf. Now, the reason why we have white is because we are working on an artboard. So um, in order to change and make that transparent, all you have to do is to click on the name artboard and then go under white and change that to transparent so we can bring back the transparency. And then uh, with our artwork isolated, if you want to bring back the layers that you had on before, again, all you have to do is to click an option and here it is it brings everything back um, and it, no matter how many layers you have uh, selected or deselected the option shortcut allows you to isolate and just focus on one single element now that i have my little leaf here all i have to do is to click on my selection tool and click and drag over the leaf in order to uh, create a selection uh, of course with the transparent background then go under edit and click on define pattern and i'm going to call this pattern leaf zero one and click on OK. And then once you're done, I'm going to press Command D to deselect and I'm going to press Option and go back to see my uh, previous element and click on the little I in this case to hide my selection. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, start to select an area when I want to apply my pattern. And in this case, I want to apply it over here in this area that is on top. So all I have to do is to uh, click again with my selection tool to make sure that I select those pixels here. And then uh, you can perhaps create um, also a new layer. And uh, actually what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a solid color. So we can also give it a background. And I'm going to go for my favorite color here. Uh, my favorite color is like a blue tile, something like that. Or maybe we can go Ooh. for a gray. That's Let's cool. actually go for a gray. Let's see. Let's see whatever works. I'm going to start with a darker color and then we can build in. I think it looks better with the, with the car cognac leather color of the chair. Okay, fantastic. So now that we've created an area where we want to apply our uh, pattern, all we have to do is uh, to click on a new layer and then press um, Command uh, Shift Delete, which brings up uh, the, the fill, uh, option, um, fill option window. And it usually says foreground color. In this case, I'm gonna bring it, I click on the down pointing arrow and click into pattern, making sure that you run the script. So you got the little tick here and the script that I want to run is random fill. So again, shift backspace or shift delete in order to bring in the fill pattern, contents set to pattern, tick script and click on the down pointing arrow to click on random fill and click on OK. And once you click on OK, the script is going to run and it's going to ask you a few questions here. So Ooh, that looks yes. so cool already. Oh my gosh. Um, and something that I needed to mention is that, of course, I already had my leaf selected, but I'm actually going to redo it real quick because I think I went a little bit too fast. I'm going to press on cancel. So again, shift delete. We got the pattern. We got the random fill here where it says custom pattern. Click on a down pointing arrow and make sure that you select your leaf. So because you have defined the pattern as a leaf, here it is. This is our leaf 01 that we just created. Click on OK to make sure to use that as your uh, source oh, of the wow. pattern. And then you can play with the um, sort of density that you want. So, of course, the more you bring the cursor to the left, the less dense it will be. And the more you bring it to the right, the more dense it will be. And minimum scales, it tells you how small you want it to go. So very small or not at all or, you know, depending on the scale, just to create a little bit more movement. And that's the same for uh, the maximum. So in this case, it tells you the, the biggest size that you want to use. You can also uh, decide to uh, rotate them if you want. And something that is super cool, Julie, look, you can also give a color randomness. So with the color oh. randomness, it actually changes the color uh, randomly and it gives different colors there. Or that is perhaps, so cool. Honestly, fun, I have it? not known about it and I'm so, so stoked. It's so amazing. And, you and can we also, have also yeah. um, uh, Juan is saying that pattern is so cool. That pattern tool is so cool. Yeah, I totally agree. <laughs> That's this is so, so such a life changer, Claudia. This <laughs> yes. is so amazing. 
it's gonna make it so easy to create pattern and you can do the same with the brightness so as you can see it keeps everything flat of the same brightness or uh, you can create a random randomness in the pattern and in with the different brightness uh, i'm gonna literally do random settings right now so uh, i just wanted to give a little bit more of a depth and the reason why i use a lot of randomize is to just create a little bit of movement so it doesn't look flat and then mm -hmm. press on okay and boom here it is and now you are in the rainforest <laughs> yes fantastic um so all i'm doing is um clicking on this layer with the pattern double click and call it pattern and then click on the color field and what i'm doing is alt shift to select them both and press command g to place them in a group and i'm going to call it wallpaper mm -hmm. Just like Just hear so. me as saying very similar options to the scatter brush options in Illustrator. Correct. We were just using that uh, Geotermia, I believe it was there as well uh, in two challenges ago. So when we were doing the grunge effect, so absolutely fantastic reference. You got it right. Harry is saying I never use the pattern tool, but maybe I will try it. Yeah, totally. It's super fun. Super Qu fun. Especially Juan is saying now we are outdoors. Yeah, <laughs> that's so true. Well, let's bring it back indoors. So what I was doing here is to uh, use the pattern and the fill, um, bring it into the, the a folder. And now because we have a little group tied together, uh, the previous mask that we created for our color fill can apply to the pattern because they are at the same area. And here it is, just in one click, all I did is to move the mask into the group. So everything that is inside the group will be uh, tightened in with our pattern. Now that we um, have these uh, elements starting to moving in, there is something that is looking a little bit off to me and is the general uh, lighting because I can see that the chair is super bright compared to the background. And uh, what I can do in order to fix that is to uh, bring up the vibrance um, adjustment layer. And yesterday we spoke a lot about the general um, vibrance lightness, which is the mathematical function and brightness, which is the way we perceive. And of course, uh, if you remember, we use the vibrance just to uh, refer to the brightness respect to the lightness. What I'm gonna do here is to um, bring the saturation to minus 100 because that was gonna give us the image in black and white. And that's the, usually the way that I color match items. If it looks well and organic in uh, black and white, it's gonna look well in color. And as you can see right now, the chair looks super bright compared to our background. So I'm gonna go back into my chair, head to my um, uh, adjustment layer, and I'm gonna click on levels. And I'm gonna start to bring in those, uh, move in those bright uh, pixels to the right. So everything is gonna get uh, a little bit better here. And I'm also gonna play with the, the contrast and uh, I can also perhaps, this is not the correct one, I'm, I'm gonna move the output in order to make it darker. So the reason why I call it output is because those slider at the bottom, they're called output and the one they're called input. So I'm gonna move the output white slider to the left with basically styling. So the reason why I'm doing that, so it makes sense, um, is that at the moment, the brightest pixel is white, but is way too white for the uh, image. As you can see, this is uh, way brighter. So what I do by bringing this in is that I make the white pixel darker. And as you can see, it looks a little bit better. It looks like it belongs uh, together a little bit more. And then you yeah. can also play with the contrast so you don't lose uh, the shadow. So something like that. And remember, if it looks well when you are in black and white, then it looks well also in color. So in fact, if we go here and we toggle it off, look at the difference. Uh, oh, perhaps I should have actually uh, pinned it to the chair. So that makes a little bit more sense. So see the chair before was much brighter compared to the scene and now um, is perhaps a little bit too dark. So I'm going to double click. Sorry. The reason why it's a little bit too dark is because I forgot to clip it. Um, and it was affecting also the background. So it was getting confusing. So as you can see, now that you clipped it, we can bring back the vibrance as well. Mm -hmm. And you can see that it's only affecting the chair. Mm -hmm. And all I wanted to do is to make the lighter pixel darker and mm -hmm. then play with the contrast. And again, when we remove the saturation, here it is. That's the before and that's the after. It just Perfect. married that image together. It looks so, them. it looks so amazing. Looks so natural. Paco is saying Adobe Kadabra. That's what it is. Yes. And Vamika, Vamika is saying that's so genius. I love it. Yeah, me too. I'm, so I'm learning new things. This is so cool. 
I'm so glad. Yeah. And, and you can see here, I'm using the same trick to fix this uh, uh, little issue because it was really bothering me. So hopefully it's a little bit better now. There was like a spot very light here. So we just kind of fix it. I know that the shadows of the chair are all over the place. Probably um, something that is better to do is to bring the levels just on top of the chair. And again, use the little shortcut to make sure that they uh, just affect the chairs. Yeah. Fantastic. Jotirmia okay. is saying, seeing it in black and white just simplifies it to our brain for our brain to process. That might be true. I think uh, black and white is way easier to recognize contrast in and so on. And we have Michelle here. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Good to see you. Thank and you so Robzilla much for joining us. here. Claudie's dope. Robzilla is saying Claudie's dope. <laughs> <laughs> you are dope, mate. You are, he's absolutely amazing. Go and check him out. It does amazing illustration. I met him during the uh, Make It on uh, uh, Illustrator on the iPad recently. And uh, I was a fan before already. He's a, an absolutely beautiful, beautiful human, but even more super talented illustrator. So mm -hmm. go and check him out. It does amazing illustration. And um, let me actually bring up his, uh, illustra his, his Instagram profile because he's got some very, yeah. very dope stuff. Let me... And Matt is saying, oh. great tips, Cloudy. Yeah, yes, I totally agree. Bring this up and um, let's see. I believe that is over here. <laughs> Robzilla is saying lurking, <laughs> lurking <laughs> around in the chat. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure that I have follow him here. Robzilla, give us your, I know I follow you, but I don't probably, oh, of course. I, I say I wrote it wrong. Here it is. <laughs> Air is air his. So he does those fantastic, um, mainly sport related, uh, I believe. And I, I'm very familiar with the one that we're here. I really, really love this Oki one. Um, but yeah, go and check him out. It does some very, very super fantastic stuff here um, with Illustrator. Amazing. So I'm going to jump back into uh, Photoshop. I'm really annoyed of buying these. <laughs> Tell us yours but... too. Let's take a look at my screen real quick and take a look at Claudie's um, Instagram. Yes. Uh, Vamika is, is asking, please tell us yours too. So I wanted to do that real quick. Thank you so, so much. So one of Claudie's is I am Claudie, which is more of um, her personal work and um you know work with adobe and stuff and then cloudy has another one that's called print my soul and print mm -hmm. my soul is cloudy studio so make sure to check that out she has some really amazing work here i really really love it i really love your plant therapy book it's so amazing and here you will find more links you will find uh, her shop link here as well so check that out you can also feel free to follow me on instagram I am Julia Masalska and um, yeah, I have a YouTube channel as well. So yeah, check us out. Share it, share uh, it out, share it out. I'm sure people will be super happy to see you, <laughs> Julie. Uh, the, oh, that's okay. They can follow the link from my in Instagram. That's okay. If you want to check no. out my YouTube channel, check out uh, the links. And there I have some educational content as well, if you guys are interested. Cool. Fantastic. Thank you so in much, meantime, Cody, for sharing all of our links. So uh yeah that's really in the really meantime cool. i'm doing a quick fix of this stuff because it was really really annoying me the shadow so i was like <laughs> working super yeah. fast on the shadow to fixing I them because they were like getting on my nerves and we have but, uh 14 minutes until the daily creative what? challenge reviews what yeah so okay, let's so let's move on let's move on let's move on. on so let's bring in a lamp <laughs> so i'm gonna start to bring in the lamp and again this is gonna be by, done by our amazing friend object selection tool Make sure to uh, unlock the layer, click and drag over the lamp, and here it is. Just in literally less than one second, it brought it back in. I'm going to press Command C to copy the layer, and then going back to, oops, that's the final, going back into our composite, zooming in into our table, because that's where we are placing the lamp. Press Command B, and that's a huge lamp coming in. <laughs> so <laughs> make sure that you press on Command T, and then, um, all you have to do is to drag towards the center in order to resize the lamp and do it to a size where it's kind of like for human uh, sort of um, use <laughs> rather than giant. <Yeah. laughs> then I'm going to drag it up 
So it will be interesting moment, to see, though. Imagine a composite where things are totally out of proportion and things that are actually so small. Yeah, that would be so cool. And things that are actually so small make them really big, and things that are really giant make them really tiny. That would be really interesting. That would be super fun, Julia. I think that's a fantastic idea. And what I'm doing it here. It would be something uh, for the daily creative challenges. I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure that'd be super cool. That'd be like just like a gigantic um way of uh our, our gigantic work there, there was a um, there was a book that was about something like that wasn't it with the with yeah. the super i don't remember um, i don't even the know you mean about. the giant the I, have, um... I i can tell you in italian very well <laughs> i'm very articulate <laughs> <laughs> so is saying, could, yeah. could live under that lamp yeah imagine that lamp being like a house or like a building or something that would be so cool you know integrating some windows in it and little a little park around it that would be so interesting to see i love photoshop for creating experiments like that so that would be super awesome okay so what i was doing here i was trying to find a way to expand my selection and i went under the filter but i just remember that when you're doing the little trick that i was showing you yesterday with the filter other and the minimum you need a mask so i don't have a mask yet um i'm, I'm actually just about to create a mask here into the lamp uh, and that's the reason why it wasn't working. And it, look at what happened. If you click on the layer mask, it actually masked that area that you're selected. In this case, we want to invert the mask. So click on option and then click on the mask. And here it is. It's actually masking the layer that we don't want. Uh, sorry, the pixel that we don't want. So all you have to do then is to zoom in, click, press on the letter B to bring in your brush tool. Make sure that you select the mask. And then um, make sure that you press on, oops, make sure oh it looks like that i have a huge brush so i'm gonna go ahead here and make sure that we bring again the brush to a decent size maybe tiny and uh, we really want to uh, hide those uh, 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 pixels here from our mask so oops here it is i'm gonna actually go back and bring the hardness up so as you can see there is like a little bit of a ugly um white outline that i left uh, I think you should be able to uh, see it also with the quick selection mode, but I'm going to work on that with our little plant, which is coming up. I'm doing a rubbish shop job, guys, because I'm going fast. I probably should have brought No, you're artist. not. I think for so, many, for so many, it seems so fast. So it's actually good that you're going kind of like at a, at a good speed for everybody to follow. <laughs> and Jotermia was mentioning Gulliver Travels. Was it that? Yes, Travels? yes that's yes. it. That's I remember it. I had the book. I had the book and I had this, uh, I remember this huge giant laying on the floor and then people, uh, like tiny, tiny people trying to tie him up. I remember that image. Yes, yeah. yes, that's it. That's it, Julie. Okay, fantastic. So um, look what happens here. So first of all, it looks like we need to swap the side of the, map, of the lamp because it looks like the lamp it's got highlights on this side uh, while everything else, look at the bottle, look at the chair, it looks like the light source is on this side. Uh, so I'm going to press Command T and I'm going to make sure that I only select the lamp. So make sure that you have all these little uh, frame square around the right, like, right preview of the layer. And I'm going to press Command T and then I'm going to right click and click on flip horizontal. Boom. And here it is. We got the right shadow. Now, the reason yeah. why I've uh, unlinked the mask and the, the and the um, and the lamp itself is because otherwise we would have flipped the mask. Well, the mask relates to the book, which are there fixed mm -hmm. in the same position, so we don't need to do that. Okay, so um, earlier on we were talking about dodge and burn and uh, something that uh, also helps to marry uh, the way a composite looks all together is the way something is. Uh, set in the same place so uh, as you can see the couch looks like had a very heavy light on and we dulled that down using the levels and uh, helping us with uh, uh, the vibrance in order to see how it looked in black and white we can also do that with the light but a little bit more what I wanted to do is to give it shape because it looks almost as this lamp is like a perhaps a 3D render and we just want to model it a little bit so how do we achieve that so I'm going to start by creating a new layer uh, on top and then I'm going to press shift delete in order to bring again our fill panel that we're using a lot today and I'm going to make that 50 percent 
gray. And then I'm going to click on OK. And as you can see, everything turns gray. Then our little clipping mask trick by holding Option on Mac, pressing Option on Mac and Alt on Windows in between the layer and click once, it transforms our lamp all gray. And that's not what we want, but that's very useful for our next step, which are using the dodge and burn tool, which are right here. So as you can see, dodge is the very first one. And in order to burn, you will have um, to click and hold to bring the burn tool. Now that so works. The burn, so the burn makes it darker and the dodge makes, makes it brighter, right? Correct. So what you do is to darken the pixel selectively with the burn and with the, uh, uh, with the dodge, you dodge. will uh, may, you can uh, brighten the pixel selectively. So I'm going to leave this in gray so we can have an idea. And just like as you will do um, in a painting, I'm going to start to like literally painting some shadows and work uh, with um, making sure also something that is very important because I don't know how your computer is set. Midtones is very important because that's affecting the 50% gray. So making sure that you're painting on the midtones. And then exposure is pretty much how much you're going to see. So I think that's even a little bit too much. I'm going to bring it up around 20. So it allows you to build in uh, the, the, the burning and the dodge uh, instead of just uh, having something heavier. I prefer like just to keep clicking and just give yeah. it a little bit more of a shape so it doesn't look and then flat. I think also in this case, it's really important to choose the right brush size because if you choose a too small size of brush, you will have little lines and it will be very unsmooth. The best, the best thing is to do is um, to choose a brush that exactly fits um, the shadow, like half of the shadow into the lamp, right? So that we can only, um, yeah, we can only see actually half of the brush stroke. Yes, absolutely. And here I'm already working in a clipping mask, so it's making it a little bit easier for me. But as you can see, I'm starting to literally start to build a little bit of a shape. Um, and uh, all you have to do in order to see how this will affect the final image, there are two particular blending modes that work fantastic with uh, Dodge and Burn, and those are Overlay and Soft Light. You can find them here into the Layers panel under Normal, so making sure that you do select your layer, which is our, I'm going to call it, um, um, I'm going to call it Dodge and Burn, so I know what that was all about uh, and i probably misspelled it of course i'm sure i did and then i'm gonna click here on the down pointing arrow to go and find our um uh overlay which gives quite a harsh approach to dodge and burn and soft light is a, what i probably um usually like to use but again uh, don't take that as a as a rule because always depend of your starting image and as you can see this is the after and this is the before we gave a little bit more of shape, which kind of resonates with what's going on here on the bottle and on the lamp and uh, sorry, on the on the chair. There were, a, you know, the lamp was looking almost like a probably is a 3D uh, object. So in this case, you can keep going now. You, you can also keep painting. So, for example, um, now here with the, the dodge, we can keep uh, adding a little bit more light directly on the lamp if you want to. Uh, the reason why I always suggest to work on normal is because I think that if you're learning how to use the tool that gives you an idea of what you're doing um, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, and then you can go back and use it with the, I'm going to have a glass of water, Julie, Sally, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Prafu is saying it's, uh, if this thing turns any more realistic, it'll pop out of the screen. <laughs> yeah, it does look very realistic. I can agree. And even, you know, working with Dodge and Burn can make it even more realistic by adjusting all the shadows and highlights and matching them to all the other objects. So yes. yeah, Gladys is doing a great job. I'm so glad that you guys enjoyed. So um, something else that we can do is perhaps to um, add a color here at our, um, our panels because I'm I really don't like the white and uh, before doing so I'm gonna start to create another group for my lamp just to make sure that I need and uh, uh, keep everything neat so what I've done is hold shift to select both layer and then I'm gonna uh, press command G to group them and I'm gonna call this lamp and then I'm gonna right click and make those green so now I know that this is the lamp and this is the chair and um, this is part of the wallpaper. Yes, correct. This is the wallpaper. Let's give it a purple color. So now we know that this is the wallpaper. Fantastic. And we got the background. So in order to uh, start playing with this color, perhaps the best way to uh, go is to create a solid color. Um, 
just like that and um, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with for that uh, my favorite color there so oh blue is looking nice as well mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of those um, I think the, the color is called Gru I believe and Gru uh -huh. is supposed to be um, the color that um, is in between green blue and, blue. and gray oh yeah. green and blue yes okay I was thinking um, of gray and blue <laughs> No, green and blue. So it's like this, this, this weird, weird color here. And uh, actually, I just realized that if I just create a solid color feel, it's actually affecting my pavement as well. And I don't really want that. So perhaps the best way to start is just to select the rectangle tool. And I'm just gonna, because especially where since we're working with such a, oops, with such a, uh, you know, straight shape, you can always press Command T in order to. Uh, uh, constrain the proportion, sorry, in order to uh, transform it and then uh, uh, hold of shift to make a custom move, otherwise, it will just uh, um, make a shape with a uh, constraint. Same proportions, proportions. yes, mm -hmm. correct. Thank you so much. And then, uh, perhaps, something that you have to do is to bring the opacity down to make sure that we are really matching uh, our panels here. And we look like we've done a good job. I mean, we probably should have done the same with the wallpaper because it looks like it's a little bit off here. And since we use the rectangle, all we have to do is to click on the direct selection tool, which is the white arrow, and you can move uh, the points over here. So in reality, I think that this should actually um, go a little bit higher up over here, just like so. Um, and we have only one minute left until daily creative challenge reviews, guys. I can't I'm believe so it. excited. So what happened here is uh, that I'm giving a little bit of a feather, as you can see, so the color is not too sharp on top. And then because I've created a mask on top of the wallpaper, all I have to do is to uh, perhaps use my lasso tool and click here and drag it up because it looks like the photo was a little bit off. So we want to make sure that we follow that and I create a selection and then I'm going to fill it with white. So as you can see, I got black in the foreground. I'm going to press on X to swap between the two colors. So now I got a uh, white um, and then oops, what I'm going to do is all the shift and then delete. Oops, sorry. I always get confused with those is option delete in order to apply the foreground color. So let's remember all together. Option delete applies the foreground color. So in this case, white, that's why you see the pixel. Command delete applies the background color. So blacks, that's why it hides them. And shift delete brings up the fill, um, the fill window menu. I'm going to press awesome. command D to deselect. And here it is. Looks like we're starting to, to make some progress here. And then Bloody, we can, let's uh, yep. Sorry, we need can to we jump? interrupt for, yeah, we need to, we yes. have zero seconds left. <laughs> Absolutely. We're going to jump onto my screen and we're going to take a look at the daily creative challenge submissions, guys. So thank you so much for participating in this. And we are going to pick a couple people today, but um, don't feel discouraged. Uh, make sure to submit those still. There are mentors, so you can give each other feedback. So let's take a, let's start here with Merc Mercurial Forte. And we have a really, really cool um, application here out on the mock-up. My funny cat, you inspire me to write. Oh, that's <laughs> so cool. I love it. We all know that Claudia also loves cats, right? Claudia? Yes. Anytime <laughs> that there is a cat, I'm in the picture. I love them. And, They're absolutely and she also the has a cat. Um, tell us more about your cat, Claudia. <laughs> so my cat is called Frida and she's named after Frida Kahlo, which is one of my favorite artists and women, not only because of her amazing heart, but also um, because she's a fierce woman and that definitely represents me. So, oh my God, a kitty looks so cute. Oh, <laughs> want to kiss it. Yeah. Can you give me kisses? I always want to kiss kitty. Aww. I'm actually the crazy cat lady of the neighborhood. Um, <laughs> at the I have one cat indoor, but I have three orange cat outdoor. Another one's called Baby Boy boy which is like a, a stray cat and then two black cat and I feed all of them Aww. and actually just very very last thing I bought uh, outdoor houses because when it's rainy and cold they can go and like oh <laughs> that is so cute oh my gosh I love cats too it's okay so we cool. started <laughs> all right let's let's uh let's give some feedback to this design Claudie just uh just start off and um tell us what do you think well, I mean, this cat, so it's already good. <laughs> you already got her. You already got it's her. It's already good. 
<laughs> no, I think that uh, she's done a fantastic job with the colors. I love um, how the type is nice and readable, uh, and the fact that she used a sort of like type type uh, writer font in order to um, work with um, with the font. So it literally looks like you know it's making a statement there. And um, I'm not sure about the opacity. Um, if I would have probably uh, probably she was trying to get the texture coming out but lost a little bit of saturation um, now that we spoke about levels and lightness lightness and brightness it looks like the lightness uh, is too uh, light while well, instead of making it bright um, and I think that you lost a little bit saturation in the process uh, but otherwise I love the composition I think it's absolutely fine the two oranges work well with the color of the cat so fantastic in terms of uh, color palette composition and typography and of course uh, extra star for the cat yay and what would you recommend to kind of keep this uh, keep the opacity and still you know take out the, the texture from the background so um, of course set it to multiply she'll be able to to just do the job and um, it looks like the opacity is being taken out so you can bring back the opacity and just make it a little bit lighter but of course yeah. i'm just talking without knowing the file if you do want some specific advice you can always ping me on discord or on my instagram and send me a screenshot and we can work it out from there yeah and cloudy is also actually one of uh, our mentors here so you can definitely get in touch and um yeah, ask questions. Cool. And next up we have, um, oh, it's also Mer Mercurial, Mercurial Forte. Mercurial Forte. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's uh, male or female. Um, but um, kitty. Oh, there's more kitties. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I knew it. I knew Claudia will be again uh, super into it. And I love the way you applied the shadow here. Yesterday we saw a couple designs and sometimes um, the shadow was not applied. So I really, really love the way you applied the shadow. It looks super realistic. And um, the colors here are really um, saturated. So maybe I would to keep it natural. I would maybe desaturate it just a little bit. Not desaturated, but, you know, match it to the to the rest of the image. The rest of the image doesn't seem to be very saturated. So, um, I'll yeah, maybe and again, tweak. Yeah, yeah, yeah sorry, sorry, ahead. sorry, Julia, I thought you were. I will maybe like reduce the opacity here by 5% or just a very, very tiny, tiny bit. Otherwise, it looks really, really good, really, really natural. What do you, uh, what do you think, Claudia? So what I was thinking is, um, and sorry if I'm like staying in this position, I just checked myself and I looked like I was laying back. I'm, I'm looking at a different screen uh, on a different angle. What, I, uh, what I'll probably do here, uh, I love what you've done with the eyes. You definitely made them pop. Um, it looks like you went from a green to a blue, but what I will do here is to match um, the color. So it looks like they are into different scenes. I love the background. And again, all I think that you have to do is to bring the levels and the darken those pixels so the fur of the cat has the same lighting uh, because it looks almost like the cat is on a day scene and uh, the, uh, the rest of the background is on a dark night scene so just marry the color so they look like they are in the same um, in the same light and the same they, they belong to the same composition but uh, otherwise i think that it's super spooky and cute which is the best and that's actually i, I put like a story a couple of days ago because that's how i wake up every day so um, <laughs> i have a very low japanese bed in my house and uh is my cat is, is like a, a little tiny cat so even if she's six years old she just stayed little so she can barely see from the top of the bed even if my bed is so low and all you can see <laughs> is literally here her, not even her eyes you just see like half of her eyelid and the ear so it's, <laughs> Pookie cute. Oh, that's so super cute. well done. Well done. I also brain, love the layout material. here and and the way you applied um, the signature here and or a name. I'm not sure what exactly that that stands for, but I love the size of this. It's perfect. It's uh, it's legible, but it's still you know it's not too big, which I think works super well. So you can actually concentrate on the artwork um, instead of you know. Uh, on the text but it's really really good i love i love the colors here i love the composition you did a, i think you did a really great job all right thank you so much mercurial forte and next one up we have mac matt mac matt and let's start with this one we have this mock-up uh body and bailey summer fun this looks really okay cute. so we got cute overloadness today yeah cute, cute and overload yeah right um, I love the way you applied the shadow here as well. I can see the texture, 
going through and but i feel like the texture is a little bit missing on the uh, on this blue text here so i would definitely apply it to that as well so set the layer where uh, this blue text uh, or blue type face is on set it also to multiply and what else um and i think you could match the blue colors uh, that's something probably Claudia would talk about, right? How to match yes. the colors. All right, go ahead. <laughs> so yesterday we talked about how to bring in um, an image into capture service, which allow us to create a color theme. So I don't know if you have merged everything into one level. If you have not done so, all you have to do is to use the shortcut shift option uh, command E, which is uh, for window for Mac, which is a uh, shift alt control E for windows. And then you will merge your image. And then we capture, you'll be able to go under color themes and lift the colors. So that will allow you to have a, a, a library in your, um, sorry, a, a color theme into your library. So when you go ahead and select the text, the text and all the other elements, you can use and refer always the same color. And that will make it look a little bit more professional and just sort of tides in all the work. So it looks like it belongs together. And I'm done. Yeah, totally <laughs> agree. Great job. I love the way the texture kind of shines through. Um, cool. Great job, Mac Matt. And another one by Mac Matt is a, in, is a page from inside the booklet. So we have Bailey loves the sun, buddy runs really fast. I love how you um, implemented the the text into the grass. So it looks like the grass is kind of overlapping and the text is really literally sit, sitting inside uh, inside the grass. So you did a really good job here. I think the color fits really well and it gives uh, a, a good contrast here because you picked a way lighter color than the grass around it, but still a very similar tone. And here we have Bailey loves the sun. I love the way you kind of played around with the colors here and um, you know created this interesting background. Um, yeah, super cool. Claudia, what do you think? I love it. I mean, again, you know, babies, kids, you got me. I'm like a yeah. sweet person. So, you know, I like it already because they're like maybe having fun and they're like laughing. And I love the way you place the images together. So you completely get the mood of like, you know, literally their, their, their freedom and running around. And what I like here is that the typeface, as much as it's very colorful and bold, it doesn't distract from the image. So, um, there is a good hierarchy going on. Um, I think that Bailey will come before a uh, body in terms of reading. So between uh, the two of them, there is also, uh, it gives you like an order to read. So they're not competing. I, I don't know which one to look at first. I'm definitely looking first at Bailey and then a body. Mm -hmm. And it also yeah. makes sense I'm with the size of the images. I'm looking yeah. this way. Yeah. And kind also of like following this health circle. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. Don't worry. Don't worry at all. I was saying it also makes sense because the image is bigger. So you're basically guiding my view where everything is bigger and bolder. And then I'm moving to the other side. So I think it's a very well constructed. And also, I think you've done a good job with bringing in the seam and uh, you managed to get the right uh, point of masking and getting the texture and getting the elements of the mock up without losing the colors. Yeah. Totally agree. I love the flow here. The uh, layout is definitely really good. And this is something, guys, you need to definitely keep in mind all the time when you're designing something. You are the designer. You are designing the flow the person follows with their eye, right? And this is all about um, the layout is all about the flow we follow with our eyes. So the hierarchy of things. And I think you did a really great job here. Awesome, Mac Matt. And next up, we have um, Neil Kelly. So this is the cover. And now we're going to jump into the inside. Oh, I love the typefaces here. I think you, you created a really nice combination, really harmonic. You have the um, um, the title in a, in a more playful typeface, which I think works really well with some um, with poetry or with, you know, maybe it's like a fairy tale book and uh i love i love the typefaces and the colors inside this illustration the only thing i'm missing is the shadow that uh, we saw earlier um kind of goes above the book cover and that's something i will be missing and that's the reason also why um this part here looks a little bit like it doesn't belong together uh because the uh, the thumb looks a little darker than the rest of the book and the reason for that is the missing shadow um off this booklet that kind of falls over here so 
but I think by just adding this shadow here, you will solve all the you know issues with the thumb here and it will look way more natural. But otherwise, I think it looks great. You did a great, great job, you know, creating um, a layout and the color composition is beautiful. Claddy. I think it's fantastic. I think it's ready to print. I've just had a look at both the cover and the inner. It makes sense. There is, I mean, if I really have to be like a critic, I will probably do the, the title a little bit bigger, like just that. I would just bump up the size of the title, but otherwise the text is readable. Mm -hmm. The typefaces matches the mood, the color and the illustration composition around the text. And I'm talking for both this one and um, and also the, the the inner shadows below. I don't know if you want to show them as well, because they're they're very similar in terms of, you know, and, yeah. and also that like the fact that they work so well together. Yeah, um, it looks beautiful. The illustration again, like I will probably move the harp a little bit far away from the text. Um, just to make, I will probably make the image of the of the lady smaller, so there is a uh, no uh, line outline of illustration that goes with the text, just to leave a little bit of breathing space. And same with the head of the lady; it looks like the head of the lady is touching the word life a little bit too much. So mm -hmm. I will probably give a little bit of a breathing space, especially yeah, because we got the bird. Yeah, yeah. I think here we're just moving up the whole the whole text a little bit to the top will help it a lot because the bottom part has. A little bit more room around it so by just moving it a little bit up it will definitely already help creating some space around the harp so that would definitely I think, so help solve the problem also one thing that i have noticed here is that the uh, text size of finding light of the titles here is different i would definitely match it so that it looks you know and that it looks same sized otherwise i think you did a really really great job um, sorry, Claire, did you want, did you want to? No, I'm, I completely else? agree. I, I, I completely agree. Yeah. Fine. And here as well, um, as Claudia said, I totally agree that there could be a little bit more breathing space at the top and maybe there is a way to kind of, um, make position it somewhere around this area where there is a lot of white space so that it doesn't, you know, um, create a competition with the illustration. So it's kind of more on, you know, on the side where there is more space. Cool. I, otherwise, I think it's really, really beautiful. I can totally well see it in the Ready bookshelves. To print. Yeah. Ready yeah. to print. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Next up, we have Hi H Johnny. H Johnny. All right. That's looking cool. cool. That's yeah. looking really cool. Yeah. Definitely love the texture. Love the texture of the map um, behind the images. Color consistency is great. The way that you frame this consistently great with the images. I mean, again, another one ready to print. Love it. Well done. Yeah, cool. Yeah, same here. Love the colors. Everything looks like it's matching. The typefaces match, you know. But just repeating things, you can create such a, um, you know, a brand out of, uh, out of a design because uh, once you're reusing things like these colors, uh, similar textures over and over again, similar map cutouts over and over again, and uh, that creates, you know, a holistic kind of experience, which uh, is something you want to go for. So this is super, super cool. I love it. I agree with Claudia. It's ready for print. <laughs> ready to go. Yeah. Well done, it, Johnny. Awesome. All right. I would say, um, guys, you can submit your um, your challenges if you um if you want, feel free to do that. We're going to be reviewing them. There are mentors. You can give each other feedback. We are going to jump into Claudie's work for a couple more minutes now um, so that she can kind of wrap up things. But otherwise, yeah, feel free to also ping me if you want. Um, I'm also really happy to answer questions uh, in the Discord and on Instagram. So, um, yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much, everybody. We had some really yes. amazing works today. Um, I'm so surprised. Um, I mean, I'm not surprised. There is a lot of amazing designers, but um, this looks really, this looked really, really nice today. I'm really, I'm really, um, yeah, excited for you guys. They're doing a fantastic job. Yes. Okay, so let's go back here. We were into our rectangle. We apply the color. We can actually uh, delete this color fill because we're doing everything here from the rectangle. Um, and then we applied a little bit of feather so it didn't look fake. Um, let me just zoom in so you see what this feather does. Um, feather just allows us to create, see how sharp it is. It looks like we literally 
put a rectangle there mm -hmm. but if we apply the feather we have a little bit of again giving a bit of lightness and make it a little bit more smooth of a transition in between yeah. now it looks like i have to bring up those points here because i missed the floor and uh, again when you are working make sure always to zoom into your corners to make sure that again you do a better job than what i'm doing <laughs> right now in uh moving up those shapes so they match the actual photo and it looks like we can bring the feather a little bit down because i kind of already did it um in order to show you the effect but here it is is uh right into the bottom of the skirting board and it looks like it's fine on both sides and we're almost ready to go the only thing that we need to do is to mask out our table and the way that we can mask out our table is to by creating a, a layer mask here and then let's go back into our uh, main um, background here. That's why it's so flipping useful to use these, um, what is it called here, um, color code. So when I use the, the color code, I understand straight away where I am going. So when I'm looking for the table and I know that the table is in uh, to my layers, I'm going to uh, click straight away on the image that is there. And I know that that's the place to start. In this case, I'm going to use the object selection tool in a slight different way. I'm going to click on it. And usually I use it with the rectangle. So I'm going to zoom in for you to see on the top menu. I'm going to switch that into Lazo. And what the lasso does is going to allow me to create uh, a smooth selection. So it's not uh, a rectangle anymore, but it's a selection that is uh, uh, can take any shape you uh, want to give it. And as you can see, I mean, you don't really need the bottom. All I'm doing is uh, have a smooth selection around our little table here and boom, it does it in one second. It just brings up pretty much all the other part um, you can also add by pressing shift and keep dragging so perhaps it missed a little bit of the books and uh, also we can oops add uh, here a quick selection tool in press on option in order to remove the center of the bottle because that's actually part of the wall and um, if you make your brush smaller you can also keep adding uh, with the little um, quick selection tool in order to bring them up then what I probably do um, is uh, click into my um, rectangle tool here, which was the color of the panels. And then I'm going to um, use our, oops, make sure that you click on it. I actually clicked with my mind. And then I'm going to use the shortcut <laughs> command delete to apply the foreground color, which is the black that allow us to paint in black into the mask. And what that does, as we've seen it before, is going to hide the pixel. Now, as you can see, I did notice that the mask let me press command and click on the mask to select it the mask didn't pick up this side of the table but i actually think that that's cool i mean i could still paint it with like a gray just mm -hmm. sort of to have a mixture effect but i'm actually liking the fact that is uh the reflection is the same color of the wall i think that yeah actually makes it, it looks very natural realistic. yeah more realistic and again if you want you can always double click and perhaps select a gray that's probably a little bit too dark of a gray maybe something like so closer to the white and um, you can paint with your brush so press b on your keyboard and you can see you bring a little bit back so we're still keeping um a little bit of the uh, of the uh, background color of the rectangle color but if you want you can bring back a little bit of the table as well so again remember on the mask you don't always have to use just uh, the black and the white it's cool to play with colors and that will allow you to have a little bit more of a transition there and uh, that's very very cool for shadows or for highlights or for reflections fantastic so it looks like i haven't done a great job with the table but again i'm just Working with the mouse, I would suggest to work uh, with the uh, with the tablet for these sort of jobs. Oops, let me bring it back. What I usually one. do is I I uh, select the portion with um, I don't know with any selection tool, and then yeah. um, and then you can just paint over it so you have the sharp edge. That's a very very cool clever uh, actually way of working, Julie. I completely agree. So it gives you like a boundaries that you don't. Uh, yeah, you exactly. Don't so you don't about. paint over it yet. Yes, fantastic.
Okay, so my goal was also to build, uh, bring in a plant, but it looks like we have like three minutes left. So yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to go into it. The only thing that I can uh, advise to do in order to bring it together is to go under the gradient panel and then, um, sorry, the gradient window here under window, you can find gradients. And here on the, this little menu, you can uh, bring back the legacy gradients. So just click on legacy gradients. And then as you can see at the bottom, you find the... Uh, um, uh, different different um, folder here into the leg legacy gradient. And the one that I'm looking mm -hmm. for is the photographic toning. So what I'm gonna do here is to use the shortcut that we used before, Shift, Option, Command, E, to create um, one layer that has all these little different uh, objects together. And then I'm going to uh, apply a new gradient map to it. And then I'm gonna select uh, one of these lovely, um, photographic toning and then you can perhaps oops set the photographic toning um to um let's see maybe oops first of all the the photographic toning should have been applied into the gradient map sorry guys so um i actually was adding two layers so here into the gradient map you can find the photographic tonic inside here so click on the gradient map layer Click here on this little layer and then here where it says legacy gradient underneath, you'll find the photographic toning and you can pick each one of you want that you think that it works best. And then you can have a play with your um, uh, Ooh, blending modes you in order really to, cool mood. yes, like overlay That's is nice. usually very cool. And then bring the opacity down just to make sure that it's not yeah. overdone. And it yeah. Yes. Fantastic. Wow, well, so Claudia, this is so, so cool. Uh, well, we have one quick question. What's your usual tech setup? So if you uh, can mention it in one quick minute, what uh, is usually... Yeah, good? fantastic question, because it's going to bring me to my um, <laughs> my um, Instagram. If you go into uh, Instagram at IamClaudia.com, that's actually... Mm -hmm. Uh, Robzilla profile. I have a, a highlight story here that is all about my creative setup. So if you actually click on the creative setup, you have a little set of stories uh, that will show you my studio, which is where I am right now with the full gears on. So again, go into I am Clady at I am Clady on Instagram and it's the one, two, three, four story called creative setup. And you can see everything yeah. there and you can hear me blab blabbing about yeah, it. Yeah, make sure to follow Clady at I am Clady or at Print My Soul. Uh, you can also follow me, Julia masalska and hopefully we guys can uh, you know stay in touch learn from each other and hopefully we'll see you back next time claudia it's been such a pleasure thank you that thank was you fun so we're gonna do we it again learned. yes and we have learned so much i feel like going into depth and really like learning your techni techniques was so helpful for all of us i have learned so many things so thank you so much everyone in the chat who joined us and make sure to stay in touch follow us on instagram uh, and uh yeah Let's let's stay, stay tuned here. Stay tuned here because I'm here coming because... for a Illustrator Day Creative Challenge right exactly, away. Exactly, exactly. We have the DCC coming up, so stay tuned here, and we'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Bye, bye everyone. Bye. Thank you.